So I'm going to go through some books I can recommend. If you're looking for information on historic race cars or if, like me, you were looking specifically to build something, some of these books are just a great read. They're, they're entertaining. Some of them are more detail-oriented. Some of them are a mix of both where you're not going to read it like a how-to manual, but you should be able to enjoy reading it and there'll be little morsels of information that something that you've wondered about and there'll just be that little detail in there that's like, oh! That solves that, and that opens up some doors for me. So to start, Porter Press, if, if you look up Porter Press, they've got this great car series, and there's a whole bunch of these. I mean, this, this here is volume 11, uh, and I think there's more than that. And they also have this exceptional car series, and the great car series, these are big, thick books, very well written, lots of text, and lots of great period photography, as well as you know, how, how the cars are currently. So, so go to Porter Press and you can find out which cars they've got books available on here. On my channel, you're probably into GD40s. So like for instance, this book, uh, I use pictures like this a lot when I was building my car. The Exceptional Car Series, these books are thinner. So they're a shorter read and there's less detailed information, but uh, this book, again, on my GD40 build was, was very useful. They generally cover the restoration. I mean, they, they, cover, they cover the whole history of the car, GD40 in general, and then this specific car. Then they generally have really good pictures of the car in its current state. But there's a lot of good detailed images in here dash, the interior, switch gear, as well as, of course, lots of, besides just the pictures, there's lots of historical information. So that's those. So these, this is in French, so I don't even know exactly how to pronounce it. This, this is a place that sold pictures in period, and so now they've got a catalog of pictures. And it's not just race cars, although these books focus on the racing pictures. Uh, this one here is 1966. This one's all from 68. Uh, they have 65, 66, 67, 68, and 69 out right now, and they come out with a new one every year. So next year will be 1970. I have all their current ones. Uh, 68 was the first one I got, and the, the pictures in here are just amazing. Um, there, there's lots of story in both, both English and French about what's going on at the events and, and the photographer's take on things. He was saying, hey, Europa, if you're building a car, uh, there, there's plenty of picture, detailed pictures of the cars. Other Europa. Oh, look at that. That GD40 is not on the road. The Matra V12, that's just cool. There's a lot of pictures of open wheel cars, a lot of Formula One and Formula Two cars and you can see this isn't great but uh you can get close-ups of their suspension and uh, obviously seen better days but a lot of times it's straight on and that that allows you to really examine the geometry if you want to study how to package some things okay so here when you look at pictures like this you can derive the roll centers and get pretty darn close from from what you're looking at here just seeing the general arrangement, seeing how the, the chassis got its pickup point set and the angles of the control arms. If you don't get an opportunity to see these cars in person, I mean, things like this, uh, you can learn so much from just going through the pictures in these books. Now, I've talked in my other videos about the Haynes manuals, and this is most of the car ones I have. It's not even all the car ones. And I have ones on like the SR-71 uh, and the Space Shuttle and F-15. But just to give you an idea of the breadth of these, uh, downside of these is when they first came out, they were $25 a piece, which is great. But now they're becoming kind of collector's items. And so sometimes they're $30, sometimes they're several hundred dollars. I don't have the 917K book because it's several hundred dollars now. I missed my opportunity to get it. So these are all really cool books. And uh, here, I'm into 512s right now. 
they'll have uh, a kind of history of the car in period, uh, its race, sometimes race by race, sometimes just in general, uh, what they did, and then it'll go into the anatomy of the car. Uh, a lot of times they have a lot of good detail pictures, um, some specifications, uh, and then it'll get into restoration, uh, usually following one car that's, that's been restored and, and going through its restoration. Uh, and then, you know, current pictures, what the car's doing currently. Jeez. So these are really neat. And, and they're just a lot of fun. Especially when they're $25 and not $300. Some other books, if you want to get into a little lesser known stuff, uh, these two books by McLean Publishing are on kind of lesser known cars. Neither of these cars were particularly successful in period, uh, but they're both really amazing cars. Uh, the P68 is now my, my son's favorite car in general because it was just dropped it gorgeous. I love the idea of building a, a sports car with a DFV and using the DFV as a stress member of the chassis, which was the idea with this car, but then Cosworth talked him out of it and they ended up not doing it. And then in recent years, when one of them was restored, they made it the way it was originally intended and they made the engine a stressed member of the chassis. And apparently, not just because of that, but because of a number of things, it just worked better than it ever did in period. So these are fun, what might have been stories. That's the P68, this is the Ferrari 312P. And yeah, it's just really beautiful cars. And sometimes the failures are more interesting to read than the successes because you get to read about what the designers were trying, what the teams wanted to do, and, and how it didn't work or, or why it didn't work. Or you know, maybe it was a good idea that just didn't get executed as well as would be hoped. So if you're watching my channel, you're probably into GT40s. And the definitive GT40 book is this. Uh, this covers from inception, uh, you know, all the way from the Mustang II and the Lola GT, through the Mark IIs, through the Mark IVs, uh, the Mark I coming back in 68 and 69. There. And then if you have a newer version, it even covers the 2016 Le Mans racers. Another good one, this is a recent book, uh, and this doesn't just follow the Lola GT, but it covers the Lola GT and into it being a test bed for the GT40, including, which you can get some of this on the internet, uh, it's got a bunch of documents from Ford in it on early tests of the GT40, and you know, specs, settings, briefs on, on what they're gonna try, results at tests. Um, and again, like the other books, there's, there's a restoration depicted. You've probably seen Ford vs. Ferrari, and hopefully you've read this book. This is the book the, the movie was based on. This is not just from a car standpoint, this is one of the most fun reads I've ever had. Uh, the first 70 pages can be a little slow as it deals with all the political stuff that, that went into Ford trying to buy a Ferrari and the fallout from that. But once it gets into the racing, this is such a fun read. This is a book on Carcraft. And if you don't know, Carcraft was Ford's, it wasn't actually a part of Ford. It was a separate company, but Ford was its only customer. It was set up by Ford employees to do the kind of Skunk Works projects that Ford can do themselves. So they did the Trans Am, uh, the, the Boss Mustangs, 302s and 429s. They built the, the Mark IVs, and that's actually, there, there's, there's a number of projects. The, they did a, a mid-engine Mustang. Um, there's a number of projects I didn't know about uh, that they did. Um, but there's some great, I mean, this here we're looking at Mark IV chassis with a nice little recipe there if you want to go make your own. One of my favorite types of racing is Can-Am, and this is the definitive book on the Can-Am series following, you, you get what happened at, at every race with pictures. And if you've ever, if you've ever built your own car or dealt with vintage cars and 
you've experienced a lot of mechanical failures, this book is encouraging because you see that even the, the top teams back then, quite a bit of times their engines were blowing up during qualifying or practice or on the first lap. That's the way cars were back then. And, and even when you had professional crews, crap happens. Related to that, this is a fairly recent book by the same Pete Lyons uh, on Shadow, which covers uh, their Formula One stuff, but, but deals quite a bit more with their Can-Am cars. And Shadow's got a really interesting history with their Can-Am cars, going through different designers who had very different philosophies about how to do things, and, and some being really radical, some being really conservative. Uh, and this is a great book, not just the narrative of it, but uh, seeing what people tried, how, how cars were constructed, uh, the, the successes and the failures. Uh, highly recommend this book. This book is kind of special in that uh, proceeds from the sales of this book, uh, the money goes into a fund. It's the Grand Prix Mechanics uh, Charitable Trust, uh, which is a fund to help Grand Prix mechanics uh, if they're ever injured or something or, or you know, short on money because of their work. Because if you work as a mechanic, it takes your entire life and it doesn't pay a lot. But I'm not saying you should buy it for the charity. Uh, you should buy it because it's just a bunch of great stories, just kind of anecdotes from Grand Prix mechanics from the 60s. And the stories and their antics are super entertaining. This seems like a little out of place, but it's such a good read. Uh, this has to do with the making of the Ilmore Mercedes pushrod engine made for Indy. And it's a fascinating look at what goes on behind the scenes to try to make that kind of unfair advantage that Penske is often going for. Uh, so this is a really cool book to read. Let's see, if you're into the Lotus 38, which you might be since you're watching one of my videos, uh, I didn't find this book until after I had made mine. And I wish I had had this because there's a number of details on the car I didn't know about. And if I had this book, I would have gotten it right. This isn't a book specifically on, on building a car or anything. It's more on the team and, and the stories of things that happened. Some of the stories are kind of weird. Uh, but there's a lot of great photography in here, uh, a lot of uh, just visual information I really could have used. This is another recent book, very good, covers a lot of different cars, and it covers a lot of information that, that's kind of convoluted with Lola because the T70 had a long life, and there's, there's Mark 1s, Mark 2s, Mark 3s, Mark 3Bs, open top, coupe top. And while those cars were being made, a number of other Lolas were coming out. So a T70 Mark III B is a newer car than a T160. And you can see how the designs are evolving. And it covers race by race and, and team by team, who had more customer kind of cars and who had the latest and greatest things from Lola because they kind of operated as the works teams in America. I love stuff like this. This is a T160 chassis. That right there is like, okay, I'm gonna go out to the shop and I'm gonna build something now. Now, if you're looking to build your own car, unfortunately, there isn't any books out there that are just, here's the recipe of how to build your own car. But a fun place to start is there are these autobiographies or biographies of different car designers. And they'll talk about big challenges they had that they had to overcome or big innovations they had and it's, it's fun to read kind of the human side of it, uh, but it's also informative to see how they did things and just get a sense of this is how things were done. This guy's career well, was pretty long and varied, so there, there's a lot of cool stuff from different eras in here. Colin Chapman, obviously, has all kinds of things credited to him, whether he came up with them or not. If you're interested in doing carbon fiber composite construction, read this. This is John Barnard. He's who pioneered the carbon composite chassis for McLaren. He also brought the innovation of the sequential shifter. He worked at McLaren at Ferrari and also in IndyCar. Worked with Chaparral. It's a good read and, and he brings a nice personal touch. He, he worked at Lola and he studied under Eric Broadley. 
and it's fun to read about problems that he had and how he overcame them and you kind of see the human element and it's these guys are all a lot smarter than me but I'm able to identify in having to figure out how to package something when you read about problems they had it's like oh I've had that problem and, and you read about what they did and it might be hey I did that too or oh I didn't do that but I thought about doing that this is Adrian Newey's it's also a really great read he's just an all-around good guy and a lot of times it's learning how to learn so reading the stuff you learn how they attack a problem how they approach things uh, and that can be just as helpful as anything else Chevron is a super interesting make, which is really all Derek Bennett. The way he built things is, was always a little different than a lot of the other guys. If you aren't big into doing designs and a lot of math, uh, read this because he made his plans while he built the car. I mean, he, he built it and he changed it. And once his prototype was done, that became the plans for the next car. Tony Southgate, he was working from before the GT40 up through, oh, I can't remember when, when he stopped, but it, oh, you know, one of the, some of the last stuff was uh, the, the Audi coupes at Le Mans in, what was that, what would that be, 97, 98? So I, 40 years of race car designs and all kinds of different projects, and he's, he's humble, uh, it's informative. Back to Can-Am, this is a really fun read. Peter Bryant designed a couple of Shadows cars, including before Shadow, he did the Titanium car, and just a, a real practical kind of home-taught engineer. I, I don't want to belittle, I mean, he's, he's brilliant, but he, it's not like reading Keith Duckworth stuff where it's uh, the stuff he did at university. This guy was just out in the field, it started out as a, a mechanic, and then went on to build cars with a fair amount of success. And then, this wouldn't be complete if we didn't include Gordon Murray's giant two book, two volume history of all of his projects. And it's always fun when you've got little notes, designs, you know, a doodles too, too humble of a term. These are really cool books. I, it, they've got a lot of these drawings, I wish they had more, but I'm weird. I'm sure the average person doesn't want a book of just his drawings. This is a really cool, cool read. Okay, and then if you really want to get into building your own car, these are some things that will help you out. This book was written in the mid 60s. You get a really good understanding of what they were thinking at the time, and it does cover kind of the evolution of race car chassis design up to the 60s. If you want to get some of that same information but get into the modern era more, this book covers a lot of the same things. I like this book more just because I like getting it from the horse's mouth, but this book actually might be on the practical side better. This is all good practical information too. This isn't theory for theory's sake. This is what needs to go into building your car uh, and then if you're going back to the period thing, this is Len Terry's book, which uh, it's, it's great to, to read his ideas and you know, why he does what he does and his preferences for things. But then you also get this thing at the back, make it yourself guide to material by usage. It's gonna tell you the thicknesses and types of metals to use for different parts of the car. If you're into Lotuses and cars from this period, uh, that's a really good book to have. Here is also when you're getting into tuning your chassis and making it actually work. This is a really great book. Uh, on the same token are the, the Prepare to Win, Tune to Win. Uh, there, there's more of these books. And don't, don't be misled by the updated covers. These books were originally written in the 70s. Uh, so they're really pertinent to vintage style cars. And this is something I'm just going to throw in because I found this when I was getting my books out. This is a catalog. This, is, this place is unfortunately in England, so uh, it takes a little longer to get things uh, from there than it does from here. But, you know, I have my regular suppliers like the Chassis Shop, uh, Speedway Motors, uh, Summit Racing, Pegasus Auto Racing, Jags, things like that. But I've found some products in here I've never found in the U.S. that if you're building your, car, your own car, 
Uh, it just solves uh, a number of things. And if, if you look, they've just kind of got everything. Um, I've only ever ordered a couple things from them, which was because I couldn't find them from anywhere else. And then I found it in here and it solved my problem. So that was all I needed them for. But um, just, I, I don't, I'm not doing this to endorse them or anything, just uh, this place solved problems that I wasn't able to find solutions to from anywhere else. So it was carbuilder.com. So I thought I'd throw that in there. Anyways, hope that's been helpful. Go read a good book.